Today on Virtual Production Insider, we are looking at pre-light days and why they might be one of the most important parts of the virtual production process. All right, everybody, sit down and shut up. Welcome to Virtual Production Insider. I'm your host, David Stapp. And today's episode is the first in a new series called Virtual Production 101. This is a series where we're gonna kinda get more into the weeds. They're gonna be more curriculum based. I'm gonna be doing a lot of talking. And I recommend, you know, taking notes, bookmarking this video, because these videos are gonna have a little less fluff and flair, but a lot more meat in terms of educational information. So we plan to do a lot more of these kinds of videos. We'll create a playlist right here on YouTube so you can follow along. And to kick this series off, we're gonna define what a pre-light day is. So you may have heard this before, but pre-production is the most important process in filmmaking. And this applies to any production. This is not just virtual production because pre-production is what makes you successful in the long run. But it becomes more important in virtual production because now you have to show up on set with all of your virtual assets already created beforehand. And pre-production is so important because it helps you have a plan and know how to execute that plan within a time frame and budget. And so today we're gonna to define what a pre-light day is, but I also want to talk about kind of the process leading up to a pre-light day too. So typically on a virtual production at the very, very beginning, you start with something like a discovery meeting. And this is where you're getting together and you're all kind of talking about what this project is, what the creative vision is, and what needs to be created to achieve that vision. So you get together, you talk through the vision, and then after that, people like your visual effects supervisor, your virtual production supervisor, they're going to have basically their tasks they know need to be done, and they're going to distribute them among their team. And so all of those things are gonna be worked on up until the first pre-light day, because all of the virtual assets have to be done and ready to be projected on the LED wall or green screen studio on the first pre-light day. And sometimes before you get to your pre-light day, you have what's called a tech day. Now a tech day goes by a few different names out there, but essentially this is a day dedicated to the technology, the hardware of virtual production. It is becoming more and more popular to see what we call mobile integrations pop up. And what this is, is productions are not going to a studio where they have a permanent LED wall. No, they're bringing the technology to them because it is very easy to take all of that over there and set it up within a day or two. This was actually done recently for the show Fallout. They actually constructed a custom LED wall for that production and it was tailored to meet their specific needs. And so on your tech day, you're going to be constructing your LED tiles. You're gonna be running your power and data cables. You're gonna be setting up your LED processors, which are what help project the image from your brain bar computers onto the LED wall. And usually once you've got all of the hardware set up and built, you then need to start the mapping process. And mapping is essentially where you are using those LED processors to help the whole system know, hey, you have all of these LED tiles, but here's how it all connects together to create one cohesive image. It's just like what you see in sports bars when they put multiple TVs together, but it's just one image. That's what mapping is. And it's a very crucial part of the process to make sure you have no screen tearing or any kind of breaks in your image. So once everything is built and communicating together, it is now time to move on to pre-light. This is the actual creative part of the process because what we're doing on this day is setting up a camera, the actual camera you're gonna use on production and hopefully the lenses you're gonna be using and you're going to be setting up different shots with all the different environments that you're going to need on your production day. So you need to come prepared with a list of environments that you need to test that day and a list of shots too that you wanna to kinda of set up and that way you can kinda of see how are things looking because the only thing that really matters is how it looks through the camera. Don't look at the LED wall. You could project your environment, look at the LED wall and it might look great that way, but it really only matters how it looks through the lens of the camera. So you wanna quickly set up your camera, get a monitor at the brain bar or wherever, and get that camera feed into there and start looking at it through there because that's really going to dictate how the illusion looks. How does your perspective look? Oh man, I can see those materials or textures are offline or that geometry of that mesh does not look good. It's causing some aliasing and you're gonna start kind of figuring out, okay, what are the flaws in the image, right? And that's what you're doing on the virtual production side at the brain bar, you know, your stage operators, your virtual art department people, you're looking for those flaws and you're fixing them in real time so that when you show up on production, you don't have to worry about that. So 
the pre-light day is so important for getting things optimized, tested, and set up to be as efficient as possible. And those same key decision makers from early on are going to be on set. You don't need everybody on set for a pre-light day. You only need those key personnel, like your directors, producers, director of photographies. You don't need hair and makeup. You don't even need talent, technically. You can just use stand-ins for talent, and that's usually a lot cheaper than having to pay talent to be there on set for a pre-light day. So let's say on your pre-light day, you know you need to test five environments. Well, you're gonna first load up your first environment, you're gonna start figuring out the placement of your first shot, and then you need to start seeing where are the flaws, where are the issues, and you're gonna start working through those. And this is where the virtual production supervisor shines. They're gonna be going over to that monitor, they're gonna be gathering around with the directors, all the key decision makers, right? And they're gonna start analyzing that image. And by the end of that conversation, the virtual production supervisor is gonna have a list of things that need to be done and they're going to know how to divvy up those tasks because that's why it's so important to have a virtual production supervisor is because they understand the process, they understand how to implement solutions, but they also know who to give those tasks to because everybody has a specific role on the brain bar side. And so once you've worked through everything and you've achieved that illusion, right, you now can move on to your second setup and then rinse and repeat until you get through all the setups for that day. But... One thing you need to keep in mind is you need to then be able to quickly go back to that first setup or go back to that second setup. And to do this, you can create what we call stage markers. And this is simply just a actor you can bring in an Unreal Engine and you can snap it to where your in-display config file, you know, the, the instance of our LED wall, ended up for that first shot. You basically put the actor there, you label it to make sure you know this is the stage marker for shot one for the day, right? And so now you can go off and move the LED wall mesh wherever you need to for the next setup, but you've got an actor that is holding its place so that whenever the production day comes along and you're like, oh, we need to load up shot number one. Well, let me just snap my in-display config file to that actor we created and boom, we're set, we're ready to go. This is how pre-light days can make you so successful on production days because you got everything figured out ahead of time. Now, I know this is kind of a dream scenario. That's not always the case. You don't always have enough time on your pre-light day. You might not have enough people to get through all of those tasks, but it definitely can make your production day easier no matter what. All right, so let's recap what a pre-light day is. This is the day where you're getting together for the first time to project your environments and to start setting up shots, setting up camera, setting up lighting, and seeing how it looks through the lens of a camera. You only need key personnel on set, that way you're cutting down on budget for crew, and you're identifying and fixing any issues in the virtual world. And by the end of the day, you should have everything optimized and organized in a way to make you as efficient as possible on the production day. And there you go. That is a pre-light day, guys. This is one of the most important days of the virtual production process. Thank you guys so much for checking out this first episode in our Virtual Production 101 series. If you like this video, be sure to like it and subscribe to the channel. It helps us out a ton. We've also got a Discord channel you can join. There's a link in the description below. This is a place where you can come surround yourself with other people in the virtual production community. And of course, we have a lot more content like this coming down the pipeline. And hey, if there's an aspect of virtual production, if there's an area you've been curious about, post that in the comments below and we can be sure to cover that in our Virtual Production 101 series. Again, my name is David Stapp with Virtual Production Insider and we'll see you guys next time.